Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Yes. Okay. Coming into your seats. Begin to bring your awareness to any distractions outside of yourself, things you might be hearing in your home or smelling or anything like that. And practice noting that it has a deeper hold on your awareness and then see if after you've noted that you can bring your awareness back so it's more even. And then do the same thing inside yourself. So any parts of your body or any thoughts or emotions that might be having a bigger hold on your attention. Notice it, label it, and then bring yourself back to a more even awareness. After you've unplugged from all of these various things that tend to have a hold on us, begin to focus on your breath and make your breath long and deep. Every inhale, filling your torso up from the bottom to the top. And every exhale, draining your energy, your breath, your prana from the top back down to the base of your spine, belly draws in. This breathing pattern, long deep breath, is really good at triggering our nervous system to release chronically held tension. And then take your hands into a mudra. So it's a hand position we hold that creates a certain effect on the body. The most common one is index finger to thumb. This is Gyan Mudra. It's good for increasing your wisdom. Or you can extend your all fingers out and take your middle finger to your thumb. This is Shuni. This is my current favorite one. This one is to increase your patience. Or you can touch your ring finger to your thumb. This is Surya Mudra to increase your energy. Or you can take your pinky finger to your thumb. This is Bodhi Mudra to increase your communication. So choosing which position you want to hold in your hands. Continue your long, deep breathing. And keeping your left hand in your mudra, take your right index finger and block off the air to your right nostril. If your left nostril is really clogged up, you can keep your right hand down and just imagine you're breathing through your left nostril. Otherwise, with the right nostril closed, breathe long and deep through your left nostril. This left nostril is connected to one of our biggest energy channels called the Ida channel. 
that has to do with the fem the feminine side, the more receptive, the more calming. So it's kind of like drinking a cup of tea it helps calm the nerves, calm the mind, continuing to release chronically held tension. Take one more deep inhale through the left nostril. Hold the breath at the top, lengthen through your spine. And then exhale through your mouth and bring both of your hands in front of your heart. With your hands in front of your heart, set an intention. So an intention is a certain amount of pressure that we hold in our system, in our mind, in our are even in our body so that we can operate more consciously. So we're always holding intentions, but normally it's unconscious. It's this chronic tension we hold that keeps us likely to respond in the same ways or to hold our body in the same pattern. And we'll begin with one ohm, one round of the Anusara invocation, followed with one more ohm. Take a full breath in. And then exhale. And then we'll begin. Shavaya Gurave Sajitananda Murtaye Nish Papanchaya Shantaya Niralambaya Tejase Oh. Deep breath in. Hold your breath, hold in your intention. Then keep your length, exhale, bring your hands back to your thighs, sit and notice. And then let your eyes open. So today we're going to be working on releasing the psoas. So the psoas is one of those places that chronically holds tension. So it's like subconscious tension that we just always hold there. And a tight psoas or a locked short psoas can cause us eye pain, hip pain, hip degeneration, never say that word, knee pain, even shoulder and neck pain. So this, and it's connected to our diaphragm too. So it can create a level of anxiety, like a chronic anxiety that we just get used to and we don't know it's because our hip flexors, this big hip flexor muscle is so tight. So a little review or introduction to the psoas is the psoas muscle attaches deep to the inner thighs. It comes up and it attaches on the front side of the base of our lumbar spine. It goes all the way up the lumbar vertebrae to the first thoracic vertebrae and then attaches deep onto the back of the hip flexors. It's a really big muscle that covers that connects our torso to our legs. And because our body is doesn't want to change the way it operates, it will allow us to move the body and we'll think that we're stretching the psoas, but if we're not aware of where the psoas attaches and how that part of our body moves with the other action of our body, then we're not actually lengthening our psoas, we're just changing where it is in space, right? So the two normal ways people hold the psoas is their thighs will come forward and their ribs will be in, right? Or their thighs will be back, but their ribs will be forward. So the way we want to lengthen the psoas, and we can do this in every pose, is we move the inner thighs back, so the butt goes back, and at the same time, we draw the floating ribs back. 
without letting the thighs come forward. So both at the same time. Okay, does that make sense? Right, come to lay on your back. Soles of the feet on the floor. Hands can be on the ribs and begin to breathe. This is a good position to notice the way you hold your, the way your psoas holds your bones in certain position. So some people will find that their back of the ribs are fully on the floor and that their butt is slightly pulling up away from the floor. Other people will find that their femur bones can deepen into their hip sockets, but their floating ribs lift up off the floor a lot and you can get this space underneath your low back. Just being in this constructive rest pose will allow the psoas to begin to release some of the tension. Well, now with your hands on your ribs, notice if the ribs feel like they're sticking up a little bit and begin to push the back of the ribs onto the floor so the, the front of the ribs pull away from your hands. And then notice if as you do that, if your butt or your inner thighs feel like it comes closer to your face. And keeping the back of the ribs pushing into the floor, begin to untuck the sitting bones. So the sitting bones push down as the ribs pull in. Keep that. Now take your right knee and pull your right knee towards your chest. And again, one of those things are likely to happen. Either your ribs will pop up or your butt will pop up. So push the pelvis down and pull the back of the ribs down. This is all really good information for you so that as we're moving through our poses, you're aware of the way that your psoas likes to readjust itself so it doesn't actually lengthen. Keeping the right knee to the chest, straighten the left leg forward, left heel on the floor. And think about rotating the pubic bone forward and the sitting bones down as the right knee pulls in and the ribs stay flush to the floor. Shoulders soft, face soft. The left hand's resting on the left thigh to bring your awareness there to not allow it to lift and then open your right knee out to the right. Think about rolling your inner thighs away from your face as you keep the ribs drawing in and up. And then cross the right leg over the body. Left hand will hold the right knee. You'll roll to the outside edge of the left thigh. Left pinky toe will come to the floor. Coming into a reclined twist, low shoulders are on the floor. Do a slight crunch of your core, so you're trying to pull the back of the ribs to the floor, especially the back of the right rib, as you try to stick your butt slightly out to the right. And once we've got the attachment sites more in the position that we want them, then we want to bring more length. So from your hips, try to push out through both of your legs. And from your belly, try to stretch up through your head. This is all really subtle. Come back through center. Soles of the feet on the floor. Begin to make your little micro adjustments. And then pull the left knee into your chest. Extend your right leg forward, right heel on the floor. This time, let's lift the head up. If you want, you could take your hand behind your head to support you and look down at your right foot. The one way the psoas will avoid lengthening is your leg will externally rotate. So your pinky toe will turn more to the floor. This will lift the attachment side of the psoas on your thigh closer to your upper attachment side. So try to point your pinky toe to the sky Rotate your inner right thigh to the floor, ribs stay in, and then lower the head back down. Take your right hand to the top of your thigh, open your left knee to the left. Pushing out through the right foot, especially the inner edge of the right foot. And with the ribs in, trying to stretch your spine towards the wall behind you. 
And then coming into our twist, right hand holds the left knee, roll all the way over onto the right side of the body. Left knee stays about in line with the left hip, left shoulder to the floor. The left rib will lift up off the floor a little bit here, but you're intentionally, intention, you're holding that pressure, that frequency of the body of wanting to, in this case, lengthen the psoas in you by keeping the left rib closer to the floor. Butt draws backwards and then lengthen out through your feet and out through the top of your head. I, I often take my hand to my rib to kind of check it because it likes to pop up so much. You know, I like manually push it down. Great, come on back up and then roll over to your side or rock and roll, come all the way up to standing. And then once standing, we're gonna notice the same thing. So take your hands to your hips. You're holding the bowl of your pelvis. So for some people, their psoas will pull their inner thighs forward and the bowl of their pelvis will tip backwards. So if you're noticing that happen, rock your pelvis forward so the pelvic bowl is neutral to the floor. For some people, their pelvis will tip forward a ton. So if that's you, draw the tailbone down slightly so the pelvic bowl is neutral. Once you have the pelvic bowl neutral, take your hands here holding up on your rib cage. And again, the same situation will happen. Either people's back of the ribs will be puffed backwards with the oval of the rib cage tipping posterior. So if that's you, lift your chest up. Others, their rib cage will flare forward. So adjust. And as you're adjusting your ribs, notice if the pelvis is shifting its position. So ribs parallel, hips parallel. From your hips, push through your feet. From your ribs, stretch evenly up to the sky. Uh, with your right hand, hold your left wrist and stretch up and over to the right. Push down through the right foot and think about this deep muscle from your inner thigh way deep into the back of your ribs and trying to make this stretch target that muscle. Come back through center, switch your hands, right palm faces the left, left hand holds the right wrist, push through the left foot, pull up through the right arm, and begin to side bend up and over. You could check, like, ooh, my right rib just feels like a rock climbing hold. That tells me that baby needs to go in more. <laughs> all of this needs to be met with, like, some humor because... We're all holding weird tension. Come back through center, stretch both arms up. And then as you exhale forward, fold, belly lifts in. As you inhale, take your hands to your thighs and stretch your chest forward. So again, your tendency will probably show up here. You'll either be a little bit more rounded or you'll be doing more of a back bend. So ribs in, thighs back, long spine. Shoulders away from the ears. And then as you exhale, plant your hands, step back, downward facing dog. Hands about shoulder distance wide, fingertips, knuckle ridges strong. If you're rounded in your spine, bend your knees and try to point your sitting bones more up to the sky and lengthen out through your arms. If when you draw your thighs back, your belly moves closer to your thighs, Crunch the floating ribs in as you push out through your limbs. Inhale, come forward to plank. Push through your hands so the back of the ribs puff up to the sky. Squeeze your legs together and spiral your inner thighs up to the sky. Lengthen out through the crown of your head and back through your heels. All right, bring your knees to the floor for table position. Inhale, open your heart, lift your sitting bones up and look forward. So this is an exaggerated position of one of the ways the psoas will hold the body. And then exhale, push through your hands, round your spine. This is another exaggerated way the psoas will hold the body. So the psoas can lock us in either of these positions. So we want to balance whatever our tendencies out with neutrality. So ribs in. Inner thighs back, shoulders integrate into the heart. From here, stretch your right leg towards the wall behind you. 
And just like when we were on the floor, the leg will want to externally open to the right. So if your right leg engaged, turn your right pinky to the floor and your right inner thigh up while keeping the floating ribs pulling in. Stretch your left arm forward and then stretch forward with your arm and back through your leg and pull more space through your torso. Great, bring your left hand down, keep your right leg straight, bring your toes to the floor, then ground your right heel towards the left. Left foot can widen a little bit. Stay on the left hand, take your right hand to your hips. Draw the thighs back, pull the ribs in, and then turn your chest up to the sky. Maybe reach your right arm up or over your ear. Stretch from the center of your core out. And come back to table. Bring your conscious awareness back to how you want to be training your body. And then extend your left leg back. Left pinky toe turns to the floor, left inner thigh reaches to the sky, low belly in, ribs in, and then right arm stretches forward. Stretch across the body. Stretch in a way that the upper arm bone and the thigh bone helps pull your torso longer. And then bring your right hand down, bring your left toes to touch the floor, spin your left heel down and then come into modified side plank. Little adjustments, and then stretch your top arm where you want it. And come on out. Come back to plank. So in plank, your knees can be on the floor or the knees can be lifted. Ribs in, sitting bones up, lengthen across the body. Bend your elbows, chaturanga, and come all the way down to the floor. Point to your toes. Pinky toes to the floor, inner thighs squeeze together. Now without lifting up through your chest, pull your belly button into your spine to protect your low back and then push through your hands just enough that you can look to your belly button. Looking to your belly button is a great way to draw the floating ribs in. Keep the floating ribs in, look straight forward, and then use your hands and try to pull your chest forward. The hands drag isometrically towards the back of the yoga mat. Downward facing dog. Inhale, look forward, bottom of your exhale, bend your knees, and then step or hop your feet forward, Uttanasana, standing forward fold. Push through your feet as you inhale, lengthen, halfway up. Exhale, bow. Push through your feet, come all the way up, stretch up towards the sky. We'll stay here for a few extra rounds of breath. Keep stretching, but as you stretch, Rotate your pelvis and ribs in a way that you can lengthen this chronically tight hip flexor muscle. Keep stretching up. And then take your right hand to your left wrist. Side stretch up and over to the right. Inner left thigh back, left floating rib in, pull. Stay here or push down with your left foot so much you can float your right leg up. Maybe your right leg stretches over to the right. Come back up through center and switch sides. Right palm faces left wall. Maybe left foot lifts. Come back through center, reach up. And as you exhale, lift your belly, bow forward. Inhale, stretch your chest forward. Exhale, plant your hands, step back to plank. 
lower down chaturanga. Legs squeeze together, belly in, ribs in, drag yourself long. Imagine someone's holding your hips and are trying to pull your hips towards your feet as you pull your ribs in and try to drag yourself away from your pelvis. On your next exhale, downward facing dog. On your next inhale, stretch your right leg up towards the sky. Now habitually, we'll tend to open the right leg again to the right. So if your right leg strong internally rotated to the right pinky toe faces the floor a little bit more and the inner right thigh lifts up. Ribs stay pulling away from the thighs as you push out through your hands and legs. Then come forward to plank. Step your right foot forward between your hands and come up into a lunge. The misalignments in lunge is either this back leg will kind of pull under as the ribs stay back, or the back leg will straighten, but the ribs will pop up. I'll readjust for you so that you can keep your ribs in while the thighs spiral back reach to the sky. Take your right hand to your left wrist. Left shoulder stays in the socket. Pull the left side waist higher as you stretch up and over to the right. All right, come back up through center. Bow forward, touch the floor. Step back, downward facing dog. You can stay here or you can move through a vinyasa. Staying intentional, holding the frequency that you want in your body, mind, and heart so you can operate more consciously. Inhale, stretch your left leg up. Inner left thigh spins up to the sky, ribs in, push. Step your left foot forward between your hands and then come up, lunge. Bring more awareness to your posture and make subtle changes. And then stretch your arms up to the sky. Push down strongly through your feet as you subtly pull the bottom part of your psoas down and stretch up towards the ceiling as you subtly pull the upper part of your psoas up. Left hand holds the right wrist. Stretch up and over to the left. Come back through center, plant your hands, downward facing dog, vinyasa, or brief seated meditation. Then looking forward as you inhale, exhale completely, and then step or hop your feet forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, stretch forward. Exhale, fold. Push through your feet, come all the way up. Keep stretching up. And then take your right hand to your left wrist. Stretch up and over to the right. Both feet will stay on the floor. This is my current favorite side bend. Bend your knees, so you're kind of in Utkatasana. And then you're gonna circle your spine back and to the right as you reach your arms forward and to the left. So we're doing this squatted side stretch on the left. Reaching to the left, stretching the right ribs up. And then reverse. 
and stay in the side stretch, straighten your legs. And then use your core, come back up to center. Release your arms down. Breathe, we'll do the other side in a moment. Inhale, arms up. Left hand holds the right wrist, stretch up and over to the left. Bend your knees. Inner thighs spin down towards the back of your yoga mat as the ribs draw in. And then do your little swoop. Bent knee side stretch to the right. Inner thighs down, ribs in. Reverse it. And then straighten your legs. All right, come back up through center. Stretch up. And then stretch your arms out, around, and down. Great, interlace your hands behind your back. Try to keep a bend in your elbows and peel your chest open. With your hands on your sacrum, push your bum back a little bit. And then notice how much the ribs jutted forward. And look towards your belly button. When you do that, the ribs will draw in, but often the pelvis will wrap under too. So keep the ribs in, keep pushing the booty back, and then lift your head up. All right, bend your knees, bring your belly to your thighs, and then stretch your hands up to the sky. Your clasped hands, so staying in the bind. Shoulders lift away from the ears. You can rotate the head. And then as you inhale, release the hands, take them to your thighs, Ardha Uttanasana halfway up. Plant your hands, step back downward facing dog or move through a conscious vinyasa. And then on an inhale, stretch your right leg towards the sky. Step your right foot forward between your hands. This time we're gonna lower the left knee to the floor. I like putting my left knee on a cushion. And then come up into Anjaniyas. Lunge. A stretch pose, but normally people talk about it, which is kind of an aggressive way of trying to stretch it and normally the other attachment site comes with you. So instead I suggest coming into your lunge, but then slightly pull the butt back as you pull the ribs in and then stretch your arms up. And then take your right hand to your hip side, stretch up and over to the left. You can stay here or you can bring your right fingertips to the floor or a block. Push down through the left knee, up through the left fingertips. Come back up through center, stretch, and then plant your hands downward facing dog. We're gonna go right into it on the other side. So inhale, left leg up. Exhale, step the left foot forward between your hands. Always put your hands on your hips and your ribs to notice how it compares to the neutrality of the floor. And then arms up. Left hand to your hip, stretch your right arm up and over. Maybe left fingertips come down to the floor or a block. This shouldn't feel crunchy in your back. If it does, it means your ribs are flaring forward, bringing this into a deeper back bend. Strong core. Come on back up. Plant to your hands. Downward facing dog or move through a vinyasa.
And then we'll meet in table on your hands and your knees. Come into your neutral table again. So the inner thighs spiral backwards without letting the ribs pop forward. Come up onto your right fingertips and take your left forearm to the floor, left thumb, the left fist facing the right. And notice when we do this already, the hips begin to turn too with us. And try to square your hips off to the left to avoid that, that it's more like a turn instead of a twist. So the pelvis stays anchored. Inner left thigh, keep stretching towards the wall behind you. Stay here or thread your left arm deeper through. It always amazes me how much different these poses feel if I'm intentionally putting my body in a specific place for a specific result instead of just doing it habitually. So hips are turning a little bit to the left here. Inner thighs are rotating towards the back of the room. And the ribs, front ribs stay in, back ribs stay full. And then breathe. And with your breath, see if you can release this chronically held tightness in the front of your hips. As you inhale, unwind. You're ready for the second side, coming up onto the left fingertips, right forearm comes to the floor. Turning the hips slightly to the right, maybe the right arm slides deeper through. Finding a position with the head so it doesn't feel like you're choking yourself. Use your arms to help twist you up into the left as you keep spinning your hips towards the right. Inner thighs back, back of the floating ribs full. Breathe long and deep. The psoas is really, really tightly connected to our nervous system. So when the nervous system or when the psoas is tight, the diaphragm fills that, that changes the way we breathe, that sends a message to our hypothalamus that tells us that we're in danger and we need to tighten up more. So as a result, our psoas gets even tighter. So that's what happens if our psoas is tight. However, also if our brain is just stressed out because for example, the world is real different these days and it's causing some tension in our minds. It goes down and it changes the way we breathe, which tells the so which again stimulates the hypothalamus that tells the body that we need to be ready to spring into fighting or fleeing. And so it also tightens the psoas. We have all these forces trying to tighten the psoas so we can be intentional to release it, to choose to not hold tension that way. Inhale, unwind. Nice. Come up onto your knees. You could put a blanket down there if you want. And then let's step the right foot over to the right. So I call this modified warrior two. The foot and the knee are about in one line. The knee lunges a little bit forward. And then take your hand to the front of the left thigh. And notice if it's lunging forward, which is really common in warrior two poses. And take the thighs backwards. There's like a little bit of flexion you can feel in this left thigh. And then ribs draw in. And then stretch your arms straight up. And try to pull the rib cage up as you push the hips down. Right, left hand holds the right wrist. Do a little side stretch towards the wall behind you. Or to the side of you, I guess. And then come back up through center. Take your right forearm to your thigh. Right shoulder stays back. Ribs stay in. Left thigh stays back. And then stretch. Right, come on back through center. Reverse warrior two. So your hand can be on your hip or you could hold your left hand on your wrist again. Come on up, this time elbow to the thigh or you can go fingertips to the floor or a block. Thighs, ribs, lengthen.
Come on back up, reverse warrior. Option, stay here. Or take your hand pretty far back, like you kind of have to tip so your hands not just directly below your shoulder. And modified wild thing. Ribs and booty back, lengthen. Have sovereignty over the tension that you hold in your body. You need tension or we would just be like a blob of jello. But it's intentional tension where we get to choose how we feel and operate in the world. And oh, core muscles, come on back up. Nice. Straighten this right leg. Turn your right toes forward. Hips face forward and come into table. We're gonna do that twisted table one more time, but with the leg extended. So before we go into it, put a little bend in your right knee and try to push the top of your femurs into your hamstrings while keeping your low belly in and your ribs in. First, we'll twist towards the right foot. So right fingertips on the floor, left forearm down. Stay here or stretch your arm deeper through. Same actions apply. Twist your chest towards the sky, towards the right, while you try to turn your hips towards the left. Inner thighs back, back of the ribs full. Inhale, come on up. And switch sides. Left fingertips on the floor, right forearm down. This is a much deeper one, so staying on the forearm might be more appropriate or begin to stretch your right arm through. My right shoulder normally doesn't make it. Inner thighs back, belly in, ribs in. Try to continue to create more space between the pelvis and the ribs. Nice, and come on up. Come to stand on your knees, kind of shake it out. Shaking is a great way to release chronically held tension in your muscles and in the mind. Oh. <laughs> Sound effects, always welcome and should be expected if you're practicing in an empty room in your house. Okay, left knee out to the side. Come into your warrior two. Check your hips ribs then connect your arms to your rib cage they already are but sometimes when we reach up we just reach up from the shoulders and that doesn't change what's happening here so shoulders squeeze into the rib cage then try to pull the ribs up as you push the hips down right hand folds left wrist stretch up and over If your intention is stretching the psoas, it's cool because it's not about how deep you go. It's not like, well, I just need to like bend all the way over. It's like, oh, I just need to do a little bit of a difference in where I'm holding these body parts so I can stretch the psoas. Intention, so important. Come on up. Modified Parsvakonasana, elbow to the thigh. Stretch. Come on up, reverse warrior. Come back through center, either modified or full parts of Kanasana in this variation. You could imagine your back was against the wall and you're trying to pull the back of your rib cage to the wall and push your back hips to the wall. Come on back up, either one more round of reverse warrior or plant your right hand down. Right, pull yourself up, stand on your knees, little dance. Maybe this time a little bit more wild and spontaneous than the last time. And then we'll come for a brief seated meditation. I like to sit on a block. Bring your awareness back to your intention that you set at the beginning of your class.
this chronic tension we hold in our body we've been doing for our life, right? Or years or repeating it many, many times. Like every time we sit down and work or watch a show or the way we walk or the way we exercise. So when we want to set in a new t- a new intention, we also need to be repeating and coming back to it. So we're going to need to repeat it a lot if we want to have it be a more dominant tension in our life. Our body is like a satellite and like an antenna, right? So the level of tension that we hold in our body sends out like messages. So if I'm chronically tense without even noticing it, I'm sending that out. And then the universe is slightly like law of attraction. It's slightly too trendy for me. <laughs> that as the you send out your stress into the universe, the universe is going to like show you all the stress and the antenna that you also are is going to be picking up on more stress. You're going to get more stress. You're going to send out more stress. You're going to get more stress. You're going to send out more stress, right? And then we get stuck in this cycle. However, if we make an intention that we want calmness or patience or love, and we hold this intention in our body, that's what we're going to send out to the universe. And then those things are going to start coming back to us. Friendships that help us be calm situations that help us see more love in the world but it has there has to be this recalibration of our organism so it can work for us instead of against us okay (laughs) come to stand on your knees again this kind of time step your right foot forward this time instead of coming into as deep of a lunge We're going to stay so that the hips are over the back knee and the front knee's over the front foot. So thighs back, ribs in. Keep your right hand on your thigh and stretch your left arm up. Stretch it up so much that you're really stretching the psoas that runs from your inner left thigh through the ribs, attaching to the back of the floating ribs up into the diaphragm. And see if you can get a subtle stretch just by pushing down through the left knee and stretching up through the arm. You can stay here or you can reach back for your left foot for a quad stretch. The thigh moves back towards the heel, pelvic pubis tips forward, neutral pelvic bowl, belly in, ribs in. Stay here, maybe stretch the left arm up. Squeeze the glutes and push down into the floor. Tone the tummy and stretch up. You can stay here or you can start to heel toe your right foot more forward. As the pose gets deeper, the body is going to move more likely towards its tendency. So try to hold the new pattern as you move into a harder situation. Then release, high runner's lunge. Lifting up the back knee, front knee over your ankle, spin the left heel to the floor, right fingertips to the floor, or you could take your hand to a block, left hand to your hip. Squeeze the shoulders back, draw the left thigh back, draw the ribs in, keep the thigh back, and then stretch. Take your left hand to your hip, look forward, use the fingertips to the floor or a block, press up Ardha Chandrasana. You can keep your hand on your hip or reach. And push down through the right foot, come all the way up, standing balance. Hold the front knee. Imagine you are laying on your back like we started the class with, and notice if your pelvis would be lifting up off the floor or if your ribs would be lifting up off the floor. Try to anchor the thighs back and the ribs back. Point the knee down to the floor, reach down and hold the back foot. Knee directly underneath your hip. Think about squeezing your inner thighs together so the muscles are engaged and then spinning those muscles backwards. This should make the pubic tip, the pubis tip forward and the sitting bones tip back. Draw the ribs in and then stretch up. Mm 
stage one, stay here or tip forward, bringing the, the pelvis, the chest, spine more parallel to the floor. Stay here or kick your back foot into your hand. Belly in. And then release, come all the way up to standing. Shake it out. Beautiful. Let's stand on top of your yoga mat, stretch up. Exhale, bow. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, step back to plank. Either move through a vinyasa or stay in downward facing dog. And then bring your knees back down to your blanket and step your left foot forward. Starting pretty upright, check your position. Left hand on your thigh, right arm up. I got a new puppy a few weeks ago and so I'm reading this like how to train your puppy book and almost every page I'm like, ah, this is just like parenting <laughs> and it's also just like yoga. Thighs back, ribs in reach. I was reading last night, I was saying that you're always puppy training. Every moment your puppy is alive and you're interacting with it, you're training your puppy how to operate in a certain way. Stay here. It's the same thing with our body. Every tiny thing we do or don't do is training our body how we want it to hold. We want our body to hold itself, how we want our mind to think, how we want our heart to fill. And so often we do it subconsciously and then we develop all of these weird patterns. The yoga is this process of bringing more awareness to the patterns so that we can change it and make the patterns that we operate from more intentional. Maybe stretch left arm up. So even like as you're doing this, if you notice like every time you adjust your psoas, the other part of your body moves and gosh, it's just so annoying and this is so frustrating and you're just doing this wrong too. Like that's not the pattern you want in your mind. So you have to balance out your alignment. Maybe walk your foot forward with the effect it's having on your mind. All right, come on out, fingertips on the floor, high runner's lunge. Back heel spins down, left fingertips to the floor inside of the foot or a block. I always just touch my thigh just to make sure I'm not lunging it way forward. And then stretch. Even with your breath, you could tell your psoas, like, it's okay, child, you can release. Ardha Chandrasana, back hand on your hip, press up and balance. Again, you could imagine being up against a wall, back of the ribs towards the wall, inner thighs to the wall, stretching through the limbs, and push down through the left foot. Come all the way up, standing pose, hold the knee. So even though we're resting, trying to rest in a position that's going to support our intention. That's going to support what, we're, what we take in and what we send out. Right knee points to the floor, reach back with the right hand, standing quad stretch. Knees squeeze together, reach and lengthen. Stay here or hinge. Hips stay squared to the floor. Don't try to avoid laying your back hip. Externally rotate, kick the foot, kick, 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 belly in. Ah. Nice, and then 
Shake it out. Awesome. Still standing, we're gonna do one more back bend. So standing on your right foot, grab your left foot. Standing quad stretch is an awesome pose and it's a lot easier to hold good, better alignment, better training can happen in this pose normally because it's not as challenging for the body. So you can stay here or you can hinge forward and do the back bend we just did, or you can work on staying more upright as you kick your foot back. Come on out, second side. Choosing which variation you want to do. Give the balance for it and your ribs pop out a lot. You could look towards your belly button to find your extra core strength and then keep it as you bring your head up again. Good. Come on back out. Shake it out. All right, standing on your right foot, lift up your left knee. Pelvis neutral this time, open your left knee to the left. You can stay here, this is great. Inner thighs moving back, ribs drawing in and pushing away. Or you can go to the front of your knee and hold the pinky toe side of your foot and begin to straighten the leg. Thighs back, ribs in, push. Anjali's. Standing on the second foot, lifting up the other one. Hold the inside of the, hold the knee first. Push, you could take your hand to your hip and check if it's coming forward. Check the ribs, lengthen, maybe hold the outside edge of the foot and push. Really nice. Okay, widen your feet. You could pivot on your mat if you'd like. And then hinge forward, wide leg forward fold. You could have a block here if you round, touching the floor. But same thing, we want to notice, We want. I want you to notice if you come in here and you're really rounded, your inner thighs are pulling up towards your ribs, or if you're really back bendy. In the yoga world, there's like this, belief that this is okay, but it's still an imbalance. We're trying to find, to always be navigating towards this more optimal way of being so we don't get so to the extreme that we get injured. So you can push through your hands to draw the ribs in, little bend in your knees or big bend in your knees, depending on what you need, sit bones back. Two options here, either plant your right hand on the floor, take your left hand to your hip, or keep your left fingertips on the floor, reach your right hand underneath your left arm and hold somewhere on the outside edge of your leg. Either way, turn your chest up towards the left as you turn your hips to the right. Try to push your inner thighs back as you keep the back of your floating ribs inflated and breathe. Stay in the posture, draw the shoulders deeper into the shoulder sockets and push the elbows a little bit away from each other. Releasing the tension in the neck. And then on your next inhale, unwind. Choose if you wanna keep your left hand on the floor underneath your face, take your right hand to your hip, 
or keep your right hand on the floor and thread your left arm through. Turning your chest more up to the right as you spin your hips to the left and lengthen the attachment sites of the psoas away from each other. Inhale, unwind. If you've taken your feet off of your mat for this forward fold, bring your feet onto the mat. So you're in a wide leg forward fold with one foot on either end. You can take a block with you as you turn your right foot forward. Block can come to the inside edge of the right foot or the outside, or you can do fingertips inside or outside. Left hand comes to your hip. Bend both knees as you push through the feet and strengthen the muscles of the legs. Move your back, inner thigh back. Draw the floating ribs in and then push powerfully through your feet and stretch through your arms and out through your head. Our last few breaths, see if you can use your breath to get more space. As you inhale, unwind. If you used a block, take it with you. Come back through your wide leg forward fold and then pivot your left foot towards the yoga mat, the edge of your yoga mat, short edge. Position your hand, right hand to your hip. Put a little bend in your knees. Knees being bent will let you position your pelvis better. Then straighten your legs and move into the pose, Trikonasana. Fire up your breath a little bit deeper. Try to lengthen from the back of your pelvis up to the back of your floating ribs. Inhale and unwind. Come down to your knees and position yourself so you're in table pose. We're gonna do a version of Bridget's cross. So we're gonna walk both of the knees over to the left and then sit the hips down to the right. So the thighs are stacked and they're parallel to the front of the yoga mat and your feet are directly behind your knees. And then you're gonna come onto your forearms with your elbows in line with your thighs. Now what tends to happen is see my top knee, how it likes to slide off. This is like when we did that threaded needle and we had to turn the hips in the opposite direction. So although we're trying to turn the chest to the right, try to turn your hips to the left and try to keep your knees as stacked as possible. And then come up onto your right hand, elbow over your wrist, it's kind of like a push up arm. So now you can use that right arm pushing down to lift the ribs up as you rotate towards the right and then draw the hips back towards the wall behind you, hips rotating to the left. This is a fantastic psoas stretch. Engage your inner thighs and try to push your inner thighs towards the back of your yoga mat as you pull your floating ribs in and try to stretch your collarbones and rib cage towards the front of your yoga mat. Stay here or take your top leg and extend it straight back towards the back of your yoga mat. Try to come onto the ball of your foot as much as you can, pinky toe to the floor, inner left thigh to the sky, and then stretch your bottom leg, your right leg towards the left. Stay here, or you can walk your left fingertips more forward. Again, inner thigh spinning back, ribs in, and try to pull more length across your whole body.
Awesome. And then unwind. Come back up to table. Knees walk over to the right. Thighs parallel to the front of the yoga mat up on your forearms. Adjust your hips to the right so that the knees are stacked and then plant your left hand on the floor. Left hand pushes down, ribs in, chest twist towards the left, back of the ribs full. Sit bones back, inner thighs towards the back of your yoga mat. Stay here or extend it, top leg. So the right leg extends straight back on the ball of the foot, inner thigh to the sky. Left leg extends to the right, pinky toe on the floor. Turn your chest towards the left. Maybe stretch your right arm forward, drag your butt back, try to stretch through the inner edge of your back foot. And then oh, push yourself up. Okay, spin yourself so you're facing forward. Send your legs wide. You could put a cushion underneath your butt if you find that you're stuck in a posterior tilt. If you're flexible enough to have too much anterior tilt, draw your belly in. And then decide. So we want a long spine. So if bringing your hands forward is going to round you a ton, Keep your hands back here and stay lifted. Ribs slightly in, inner thighs to the floor, or begin to come forward. If you're positioned on your mat normally, you can even hold the edge of your mat and kind of drag you. You want to drag your belly button more forward, ribs in, so you don't round the back too much, inner thighs down. In Chinese medicine, they work a lot with the psoas because the psoas is so close to the Don Tian, which is like the energy center. In Eastern philosophy, it'd be the same thing. It would be the, the navel point where the kundalini energy rests. So at this navel center where we hold all of our energy, it gets bound up and we don't have access to it when our hip flexors or we're holding chronic tension around the diaphragm. Okay, walk yourself over towards the left. Bring your left forearm to the floor. Keep your inner thighs to the floor. You could put your forearm on a block here if this seems too low. And then stretch your top arm up. Maybe take it behind your head. Ribs in, butt down. Maybe stretch it in the direction of your toes. And as you inhale, unwind, come back through center. Bring your awareness back to your intention. Sometimes when I'm working on something like um, being more loving, I'll set a reminder in my phone to like go off like every hour. It'll be like, be love see through the eyes of love. So I just get this like inserted reminder that happens more frequently because that's what it takes to shift a pattern is the repetition of it. Come over to the left, left arm on the floor or to a block, hand on your hip or up behind your head. You stretch your arm. You're allowed to stretch the arm and go, oh, I actually don't like that. And then move it back. And come back down. Last one.
And walk yourself up. Use your hands and pull your knees together. Then come to lay down on your back with your block nearby. We're not going to use the block immediately. So back in this constructive rest position, notice the way the bones are held. The pelvis is tipping forward or the ribs are tipping up. And then see if you can subtly bring the attachment sites further away from each other. Back of the ribs down, inner thighs forward. Then pull your right knee to your chest. Continue to push your butt down, extend your left leg forward. Push out through the left foot, through the inner edge. And take the left hand to the thigh, open the right knee to the right. We're not gonna move into the twist here, so I want both of your hips to stay even on the floor. Take the right knee through center. Left hand will hold the right knee. I like to take the right thumb into the crease of my right hip and just pull the right knee as much over as you can without lifting the right hip up. Push the butt down and draw the inner ribs in. Maybe extend the right leg more straight. Switch sides, soles of the feet on the floor. Left knee draws into the chest. Right leg extends forward. Being conscious of the way you're rotating the right leg, keeping the toes up to the sky instead of allowing it to tip out to the right. Right hand on your hip, open the left knee. Keeping the left hip on the floor, right hand holds the left knee and pulls it towards the midline, holding the outside edge of the left thigh. Maybe left thumb pushes the hip away. Maybe the left leg straightens. Ribs in, inner thighs down. Okay, right, come back through center. So we're gonna repeat that sequence on a block. So we're gonna start on the lowest level. And if you don't have a block, you can just keep repeating with the sequence with us. The block is gonna raise the hip, so it's gonna bring more distance between the psoas, between the floating ribs and the inner thighs. Just pull the right knee down towards the chest, extend the left leg forward, left pinky toe towards the sky. Think about pushing the inner thighs down to the floor as you keep the back of the ribs pulling towards the floor. Left hand on your left hip, open the right leg out to the right. Notice if you feel yourself rocking towards the right with the left hip lifting and don't open that much. And then we'll go into this part, twist. Left hand holds the outside edge of the right knee. The left inner leg turns towards the right, maybe straight in through the right leg. back through center, soles of the feet on the floor, and pull the left knee into your chest, right leg forward. You could try just being in this position and notice the difference between once you're in the position, stretching out through the right leg. There should be a difference. Right hand on your right thigh, open the left knee towards the left. Half twist. The block can be helpful because it can it gives better feedback when we start to rot, start to tip over. Maybe straighten the left leg. Inner, try to squeeze your inner right thigh towards your inner left thigh. Nice. Come back through center. Soles of the feet on the floor and breathe. Stretch your arms towards the wall behind you. We're gonna repeat that sequence again. So you can choose to stay on this level of the block or maybe go back to butt on the floor or you can take the block up to the second level. So the block's on the sacrum. Ribs in, inner thighs down, right knee pulls to the chest. Left leg extends forward. Stretch out through the left leg from like the Don TM from just below your belly button. Push the left foot away from you. 
and then hold the left hip down as you open the right knee towards the right. Push the right knee into the right hand. Push the left foot forward. This time, instead of doing the half stretch, we're going to bring the leg back up through center. Interlace the hands behind the thigh and begin to straighten the leg as much as you can. Femur bones push into the hip sockets. Inner thighs push towards the front of your yoga mat. Ribs in. You might feel your muscles jumping for joy here as they release chronically held patterns of tension. And then switch sides, soles of the feet on the floor. Left knee in. Right leg forward. Maybe working with your psoas with the visualization, every inhale, imagining your psoas white and luminous, stretching like taffy, getting longer and more subtle. Every exhale, imagining like a dark pollution of tension, getting released from that muscle. Right hand pins the left, right hip down, left knee opens to the left. Come back through center, interlace your hands behind your thigh and straighten the leg. Avoid wrapping the butt under, keep pushing the pelvis down as you keep the ribs in. Shoulders magnetizing into the shoulder sockets, face soft. And soles of the feet on the floor. Stretch your arms behind you. Okay, we're gonna do it one more time. So you can repeat butt on the floor, butt on the first level, butt stays on the second level of block, or you can go up butt to the third level. Not, most bodies won't like this. Not even sure if mine will like it today. I might be switching back. Okay, right knee pulls into the chest, left leg goes forward. Push out through the left foot, draw the ribs in. Now pin the left hip down, open the right knee. Notice the tension that you might be holding in your shoulders or your face. Ask yourself if that's the kind of tension you want to be strengthening. Come back through center. Same thing, we'll interlace the hands behind the thigh and straighten the leg as much as we can. It does not need to straighten all the way. Use the hands on your right thigh to guide the femur bone into the hip socket. And release. Pull the left knee in. Straighten the right leg forward. This is a great little sequence with the block that you could do after you've used your psoas a lot. So if you've gone running or biking or if you've been long distance driving, like our psoas gets used so much. It gets used when we're being active and walking and actively pulling the leg up. But it also gets tight when we just keep our thigh and our belly closer together. So in like a seated position. Right hand holds the right hip down. Open the left knee towards the left. Bring the leg back up. Interlace the hands behind the thigh. And release, soles of the feet on the floor. Last one, stretch the arms up behind the head. Now put the elbows by the side. 
We push the elbows down to lift the chest up, push into the feet, lift the hips up, remove the block, stay in bridge. You can stay here or you can take your hands to your hips and help push your hips towards your knees as you tone your belly and pull your chest towards your face. Inner thighs stay turning towards the floor. And then lower down. Nice. Hands on your knees, circle your knees in a circle. You can continue to use the hands or you can move the hands as you circle the knees out. Maybe taking half circles, maybe switching directions. And then take both of your knees to the left, nose to the sky. If there's another variation of a twist you want to do, you can do that now. And bring your knees back to center and take your knees in the opposite direction. Repeat the same twist that you did on the other side. Come back to center. You can do half happy baby, holding the knees out wide, pulling the knees towards the armpits as you lengthen the tailbone to the floor, untucking the hips. Or you can reach up for full happy baby, holding the pinky toes of the foot. But we're trying to create length through the low back. So untuck the pelvis, keep the ribs in. Like little movements here if you'd like. Bring the soles of the feet to the floor. One more time, constructive rest. You can shake your bum here as you're trying to dry it off on a towel or it be a bear, scratching it on a tree, and the glutes kind of shake around. Yeah. And then rotate your inner thighs forward. Keep your floating ribs in so you don't have a lift between the floor and the back of the ribs, but you do have a slight lift between your low back in the floor. You can stay here or you can take your fist to the top of your thighs and really gently push your thighs away from your face as you pull your belly in and up to your throat. So a very gentle traction. Releasing that, stretch your legs out wide. Shavasana. Legs wide, hands up. Sometimes I like to point my feet to kind of give a last ripple of love to my body. And then when you're ready, letting yourself come into stillness. Shavasana, a pose for deep relaxation. Helps us integrate these new patterns into our whole organism. And also deep relaxation will trigger that part of your brain that tells you, oh, I'm resting. I can go and turn off all these muscles that I've had tight in case I needed to fight or flee. So give yourself this time to deeply relax.
keeping your body still, bringing your awareness of your breath back. And breathe long and deep, letting any tension that can release, release a little bit more. And feeling yourself like a satellite and also an antenna, and you can participate with yourself in a way that you can choose what you're sending out so that you're more likely to get that same thing back. Wiggle your toes and your fingers. When you're ready, come back up to an upright seated posture. When you get up to your posture, come into your mudra again. So you can do thumb and index for wisdom, middle and thumb for patience, ring and thumb for energy, or pinky and thumb for communication. Notice what this more and more conscious level of tension that you're holding in your hand as on the rest of your organism. And then bring your hands back in front of your heart. And bring your awareness back to your intention. Use your breath to plant your intention with every cell of your being. Bow your head to your heart. Thank yourself for showing up for your practice. And thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a lovely day. Namaste.